Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a morning market update for Monday, November 12th, 2018. Uh, and this video will start out with the broad markets. Keep it kind of quick. I wanted to go over some of the things I'm watching today. Uh, individual stock trade ideas, still very light. I know I haven't put uh, talked about having a lot on the watch list, but uh, I'm just not seeing the clear setups. And on top of that, here's another consideration that, that, that goes into this. Uh, when you have extreme levels of market volatility, big price swings, especially during a corrective phase, because remember, stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise, um, you have two benefits by trading the indexes that you might not normally. Number one, you have outsized gains. You know, you know right now today, uh, or I should say in, in recent weeks, QQQ is going up and down 3% or more in a single day. Uh, and when you trade an index versus an individual stock, you don't have to worry about news events. You wake up in the morning to find out the CEO did this or that, or the company is being investigated by the SEC, or you have to navigate through earnings. The beauty of trading index ETFs um, or futures, whatever your vehicle is, uh, is you have diversity. You buy QQQ, you're owning 100 different companies. You buy SPY, you own 500 different companies. And um, normally, you're not going to get a whole lot. It can take days, weeks, well, I should say weeks or many months, you know, to get you know, five, ten percent on SPY, um, but in with volatility like this, especially with QQQ, you can get that in just a couple days. So I wanted to make mention. So that's why my focus has been that. It's my personal trading as well as the trading ops on the site. Why complicate it uh, when QQQ is so, especially QQQ, it is so tech heavy and even more so, so heavy in the top ten components that uh, you have. A concentration, if you will, in, in those names. And, you know, they, uh, you know, uh, when you have a lot of outflows like you do lately into QQQ, people pulling money out of the um, the overcrowded trade of indexing of uh, both in the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, uh, it puts blanket selling pressure, pressure on all those companies, and especially those that are top heavy components. So does, in other words, Amazon could be just knocking the the cover off the ball right now uh fundamentally everything else i'm just using an example but it doesn't matter uh all that matters in in, in the stock market or with any security it's supply and demand more sellers and buyers a stock will go down and so that's what happens so you've heard the expression the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. and so anyways that's that's part of my reasoning now focusing on the indexes as long as this, uh, you know, we have these opportunities to do this and, um, you know, not overcomplicate our portfolio. So um, let's leave it at that. You know, basically you're shorting QQQ or NQ, which we are short QQQ officially. That means you have a pretty big stake in Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook. You're short all those companies um, by shorting QQQ. So let's let's dive into the charts and uh, I'll go over the markets and then we'll get to a couple other opportunities right now. Uh, this is a 60 minute chart of NQ. I posted this in the trading room this morning. Uh, what happened is I posted last night, we had a perfect kiss right here, a little nice uh, back test. If you recall last week, I was highlighting these uptrend lines with the negative divergence on the 60 minute charts. Uh, we ran into, I had a marker here. This was a resistance zone right here. We ran into, hit the top of that resistance zone, went on to break down as expected with the divergences and all that, broke down and made a perfect back test. And this is NQ. SPY did the same thing, or ES, I should say the S&P 500 E-minis. Uh, we came down, we hit here today. We had a little reaction pre-market. I expected another reaction here. And we did, it bounced a little bit. You'd have to go down to a one minute chart to see it. Um, but then it went on to break that support. Now, a couple things I wanna point out here. Uh, okay, uh, one thing I wanna point out is the uh, potential divergence. I showed that uh, again in the trading room today, we came back down to that 69.85 support level. You can see that's a that's a pretty key level. Now, uh, bearish that that's been broken. You can see that uh, was, you know, acted as support from above, resistance from below. And so now you have this potential divergence. Now, keep in mind, divergences are not a buy signal, but they are an indication of a likely trend reversal. So, and I do think we're gonna get a bounce here. So all this was bearish. Bigger picture, and guys, keep in mind that I, I cover daily charts. I look, I talk about swing trading. I talk about active trading. If you are a swing trader, and if you are short QQQ, uh, for example, which is you know only because it's an official trade idea, nothing's changed. The in fact, everything since we added that trade on has only served to reinforce, um, you know, the basis for entering that trade. In other words, we sh we shorted that 
you know, right at the top of a, a strong counter trend bounce, right of you know, right up here uh, recently. And um, everything that's happened since helps to confirm the case uh, that we we are probably going to go lower now in the near term. And this is I do this for active traders. I'm an active trader myself. You know, I paused the video just a second ago to reverse because I'll get to in a second here why um, I think we're going to probably bounce now. You have this potential bullish divergence given it's not confirmed, um, but it is there. Uh, forming on QQQ and you also have some levels of support here some previous reaction lows coming up but more importantly a spy let's get to that in a sec well, let's do that now let's just jump over to spy all right uh, here's spy this is a 60 minute chart and uh, what we have now we've almost backfilled that gap we haven't backfilled it yet but we've come pretty darn close and I'm sure a lot of eyes are watching for a backfill that gap uh, QQQ already faded its gap which is bearish so longer term um, you know, at, at least near term, I'm looking for just a little bounce off this level and we get a gap backfill and they might step in early. I think a lot of eyes are watching. We have that bullish divergence I just showed you on the NQ. But again, that's short term stuff. If you're a you know swing trader, you don't want to try to game these counter trend bounces, especially if. And again, a lot of what I'm doing, I have to formulate, you know, the big picture where I think things are going. So sometimes I will, in doing that, if the long, my longer term outlook is bearish, uh, or at least intermediate term, I will decide um, which bullish technical setups or technical events to ignore. Uh, because what will happen, just like in a strong uptrend, how, how the way that bearish chart patterns uh, have a higher failure rate or don't play out at all, or breaks the support, the shorts jump in, and then the market turns around and guns it because you have a lot of buyers stepping in. If you're in a period of distribution, what will happen is uh, bullish chart patterns and developments like divergences, like I just pointed out a second ago on the um, NQ 60 minute, uh, those will have a much higher failure rate, uh, less lesser chance of playing out. Uh, so there it is. It's worth mentioning. And um, this is a, my go-to time frame, the 60 minute chart, just like I like to, you know, short at the divergent high there long at the divergent low um, you know simple wash rinse repeat stuff I don't want to oversimplify it but sometimes it is really you know almost that easy and again you you, you know divergence isn't a sell signal because you would have shorted here you would have shorted there you would have shorted there your sell signal comes on a break of uh, support like you had here uh, just like you had a divergent low now sometimes I will step in based on the divergences and everything I see when I expect a reversal, there's a lot that goes into that. But then, of course, you have a, a higher probability buy signal once you have a breakout of a trend line like that. So this was our sell signal most recently, even though we shorted here again, um, because although I didn't have a sell signal with a trend line break, I did have a bounce back into resistance within a downtrend. So there's two ways to really uh, short. You either go long and a bounce back to resistance. I'm sorry, go short or you short on a breakdown of support. Uh, just like when you're trading long, you go long on a pullback to support, uh, let's say, or you go long on a breakout above resistance. Okay, and here is ES, uh, given all this that's happened recently is bearish. However, uh, same story, we have uh, just clinging, hanging on by a thread here, you have a, uh, uh, divergence right there, potential divergence. The RSI has actually made a slightly lower low, so we have a, a potential divergence on the PPO right there. But you can see this is a pretty, uh, a, a very significant support level on ES. Again, I'm starting here with the futures. We'll get to SPY in a second. Uh, a lot of support there. It acted as support there. Once support was broken, you had an impulsive sell off kickback rally support once broken becomes resistance we had another pierced it briefly there but the more we were we were rejected again pushed back up failed again broke out and had a big rally so this is a level i'm watching 2750 it also coincides with that gap on spy we'll get to in a second and so with the divergence the fact that we've moved down pretty good I think a lot of at least for a, a kickback rally uh, we'll have the buyers step in here if they don't Keep in mind, it, that doesn't have to happen. Uh, you know, if they don't, that just shows how bearish things are right now. Because uh, when you have, when you finally see buyers, they've been buying this dip all the way down. You know, they're, you know, it was dejecting for the longs and the bulls here, but then they had this little relief rally, put a lot of hope back in. All of a sudden, that big rally, uh, the big move from uh, last week has been faded. This is a gap backfill. So um, let's get to SPY in a second here. Now, my point being is if that breaks, not good.
that is not good. You should at least see buyers come and step in here. If they don't see any, if we don't see much of a reaction here, it just means the buyers at this point, uh, at least in my opinion, I don't want to oversimplify things, but it, it would appear that they've given up, that they've been burned so many times buying dips. And after that big ramp we had last week in the markets, to see all of it, especially in the NASDAQ, which has faded all of it and then some, very bearish. So there it is. SPY is now oh, close to it. Well, you can see the top of that candle is right there. So close to it. I have the, the line set over here. It covers a few more reactions. 275. Let's call it a round number. Let's see what happens at 275. Uh, if we break right on through it and we don't recover. And I don't see a whole lot here in the 60-minute chart. Um, that says go long right now. The only thing I will say I'll give it credit for is the uh, PPO right here. Uh, I don't know why I have MACD. I changed uh, I changed uh, monitors on this chart and I had to put up another format. Let me let me clean that. Okay, here it is. Sorry, there's a PPO, very close cousin of the MACD. Uh, I get this question a lot. I know some of you don't have some charting programs don't allow for a PPO. It is above the zero line, uh, indicating that that trend is bullish. You know when it's typically when the uh, the PPO, especially the 9 EMA, the last of the two to cross is above zero. The trend is bullish. When it's below, the trend is bearish. So by this trend indicator, it's still bullish. Plus, we're coming up on a big gap back. A lot of eyes are watching this. And again, uh, anything can happen, but I still favor a, a kickback. Uh, buyers stepping in here and buying this. Uh, and if they don't, if we go much below and can't regain that, especially with a 60-minute candle, we get a big red uh, candle through there and close a 60 minute candle we're probably coming all the way back down here to 270 and if we do that i still think as i said before you'll start to see the selling accelerate you know we may get a reaction there at support but uh you know the more we come down from here the more it just reaffirms that uh that case that i was talking about that we're going a lot lower we're going to take out the recent lows uh and hit those downside targets that i have from uh at least the lows earlier in the year so there's spy at a gap backfill active traders can certainly cover short step in here and if it goes you just jump back into your shorts swing traders Again, I don't see enough in the charts to, um, you know, warrant covering any short positions uh, if you're not a very active trader. Here is QQQ, 60-minute chart. Uh, coming up on some support there. You have a reaction low, reaction there. It's not the, the biggest support level. And again, you get down below here. There's a big gap to backfill there, but it gets ugly. I think once you get near these lows, you're just going to see panic selling stops hit, and you're just going to see a return of what we had back here with the impulsive selling. So, And jumping out to the daily time frame, uh, here's a QQQ chart showing the divergent high, everything else I've showed many, many times in the past. But let's just go back uh, to this clean, simple chart. Here's a trend line uh, where we shorted on the back test uh, with the, there's that big day that this is the big green day I'm talking about and the knife through the heart for the book. We had that huge green candle cues were up. What was it? Well over 3%. And then all that, all that, all those gains, including the gap, even not just the candle, the big gap before it faded and then some. Uh, so, like I said, that's uh, quite a bit of selling for the last few days. Here's some support right here on the daily. Uh, coincides with that support, uh, some of the other support levels I showed you. So I'm looking for at least a bounce here. We'll see how far it goes. And if we don't get it soon, it's not going to be good for the bulls. But uh, that's what I'm leaning towards. And on SPY, if we look at the daily chart, you can see there's that gap. If I put the crosshairs right here, the candle. So you had the big green candle there, but you also have to add in. Remember, candlesticks, if there was a gap, won't show that. A line chart would show this. Is, so this was really the move for the day because we closed down here. So now we backfilled the gap. Uh, that is a natural support level. You can also see some support there. Uh, so maybe a bounce. And if not, if we start to enter that waterfall type sell-off level where stops are being hit, longs, especially the big institutions are still liquidating, uh, then um, you know be prepared for anything. Uh, so this is my scenario. Despite any of the near-term bounces that I keep talking about based on the 60-minute charts, uh, daily has us coming down here, undercutting those recent lows, probably undercut the... Uh, well, here were the reaction lows from earlier in the year. So somewhere in there, give or take, maybe undercut it, maybe reverse a little uh, above it or even around those previous lows. Either way, that's a lot of downside. So let me just make it clear on SPY. I'm looking at probably close to 6% all the way down to 8%, possibly more. Uh, and again, that would give us a divergent low. That's the scenario I've laid out. 
and that would be a nice time to go long for some swing swing long entries. And by swing longs, I'm talking things that we can go in for not just a day or two, but for several weeks, possibly several months or more, uh, if we get that scenario. And it's just one of, it's just a scenario at this point. We'll just have to see how the charts evolve. Um, Here's the uh, QQQ daily, and that shows a similar thing. You know, we had that big fade so far. If we come back down, have another waterfall type sell off with impulsive selling like we had going on here and here, uh, take us down towards those lows from earlier in the year right here. There's your low back in uh, January and back in April. Or, I'm sorry, February, February low, April low, and uh, somewhere in that range, and then maybe put in, maybe, maybe not put in a divergent low and then set us up for a, a nice reversal. You know what, I'm going to wrap it up here, and I will cover the other things that I wanted to, uh, to show for members. I'll either put a, some charts up on the front page, on the home page. Uh, I want to highlight crude oil, natural gas, and some other things right now, uh, treasury, some other things we're looking at. So we'll wrap it up here. Uh, just keep this a general update on the you know, general market analysis, and uh, I'll get this out on, uh, I'll get this uploaded to YouTube right away. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.